Hello, this is Saya Zere, your teacher, and today we are dealing with Geography Grade 10, Term 2, Geomorphology with Saya. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share for more content like this. Okay, let's not waste any time, let's get to it. Introduction What is geomorphology? Geomorphology is the study of landforms, their processes, history, and how they evolve over time. Landforms are valleys, cliffs, mountains, hills, etc. etc. Okay, so why is it important to learn about landforms? Helps us understand natural disasters like earthquakes, volcanoes, and landslides. Provides insight into soil formation, erosion, and land use. Also helps in environmental conservation and urban planning. You know, when you want to build a city, let's say the government wants to build a city, they don't just go and find a place and just say, oh, we're building a city here. They need to plan for that city. What if they build a city and the next thing you know, flood comes and destroys everything. So they need to plan. So that's why it is important to learn about landforms. Okay, let's move on. The structure of the earth. Now we're going deep. The internal structure of the earth. The earth is divided into three layers, namely crust, mantle, and core. As you can see the picture there, there's the crust. And then there's the mantle here. Is the outer core and inner core. The crust, let's discuss the crust. The crust is the outermost layer of the earth, as you can see here. It is a solid rock. The crust is where we are standing right now, where we're building our houses, that's the crust. But it don't just end where we are standing right now, because it is a thickness of about 8 to 40 kilometers. And there are two types of crust, continental crust and oceanic crust. Continental crust is the crust here, the rocks here in the continent, and oceanic crust, the rock beyond the sea, under the sea. Okay, contains landforms, rocks, Soil and water bodies covered here, landforms, water bodies like rivers and all other kinds of water bodies. Okay, let's move on. Continental crust. It is thicker with an average of about 35 kilometers. It is made mainly of granite rocks which are rich in silicon and aluminium and are called CL. Let's call it CL. Don't Try to be fancy with it. You'll forget the spell in the room of exam. So let's just call it Sia. Okay. Oceanic crust. It is thinner with thickness of about 7 kilometers. You can see here the continental crust. Is the thicker is the thicker one with 35 kilometers. And oceanic crust with 7 kilometers is thinner. Okay. It is made mainly of basalt rocks, which are rich in silicon and magnesium, and are called sima. Sometimes they might not say continental crust or oceanic crust, they might just call it seal and sima. Just know that they are talking about oceanic crust and continental crust. Okay, let's move on. Before we go to the mantle, there is this thing called the mohor of it is discontinuity, or simply as moho. So what is this? It is the boundary between the crust and the layer beneath it, which is the mantle. It is named after a Polish scientist called Mr. Mohor of it is. Okay? In the exam room, they might, they might ask you, what is the name of the boundary between the crust and the mantle? Just say the moho or the mohor of it is discontinuity. Okay, let's move on. Let's go to the mantle. The mantle is below the crust. 
it is the thickest layer with about 2,900 kilometers. They must ask you, which layer is the thickest? I say the mantle. Okay. It consists of semi-fluid or plastic rock material as the temperature can reach 500 degrees Celsius. This one, they might, might also ask you in the biological term question. They say a semi-fluid plastic rock material. It's just no, they are talking about the metal. Okay. It is composed mainly of silicate materials. Okay, let's move on to the core. What is the core? Okay, the core is divided into two layers, outer core and inner core. It is the center of the earth with a radius of about 3,475 kilometers. The outer core. Liquid layer made of iron and nickel, responsible for generating Earth's magnetic field. The inner core. It is a solid sphere composed mainly of iron and nickel. It is extremely hot with temperatures above 2000 degrees Celsius. So someone might ask, why is it a solid sphere but the temperatures are very high here, are intense? The reason is there is intense pressure from the earth at this layer. That's the reason it is a solid, although the temperature is extremely high. Okay, let's move on. The lithosphere and the asthenosphere. What are all these? Okay, let's talk about them. The outer rigid layer of the earth, which consists of the crust and the upper part of mantle, is called the lithosphere. This is the rocky part, the lithosphere. It consists of condensed lithosphere, which is thicker, and oceanic lithosphere, which is thinner. Don't forget that. Okay. The lithosphere floats over the semi-fluid layer of the earth called asthenosphere. Okay. The rocky part of the earth, the crust part of the earth, and the upper mantle part of the earth, which is solid, it floats on the semi-fluid layer of the earth called asthenosphere, okay? The asthenosphere is about, is in the mantle and the upper layer of the outer core, okay? Which is semi-fluid. Here you can see the little sphere. You can see the asthenosphere. This is all for today. The next lesson we're going to talk about different types of rocks. Make sure you read ahead. Make sure you prepare. Make sure you like and share. Subscribe for more contents like this. You'll never get it wrong with Sayazere. Thank you. <laughs>